All right, folks, welcome back. Rob, we are back better than ever, babe. How are we doing? Good. How are you doing? Good, man. Just enjoying another Tuesday afternoon. Uh, it's not nearly as hot as it was last week, but I am getting um, some serious golf course vibes right now. Like It's <laughs> nice and cool out. I think we just broke 80, like maybe within the last hour, but previously this morning, it was nice and cool out, man. It was, it was perfect for yeah. a little uh, dew sweeping round. For sure. Yeah, no, this morning was nice. The last couple, two mornings have been nice. So it's got me excited for Thursday with the weather. Yeah, even last night on my way home from work at like, you know, a little after midnight, it was like 68 degrees in my car. It was it was beautiful. Out. Um, yeah, this morning would have been perfect to, to get out early. But uh, did you play any golf this weekend, Rob? Uh, well, I played Aurora Country Club last Thursday. Like right. I said, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. That course is first time playing it. It was beautiful. I mean, it's it does the same thing to me like Ridge does, though. All those holes that are you know the perimeter houses, you know, I might yeah. as well just like skip those holes. But the course was in great shape. I mean, it was it was fun to play, challenging. Um, do, you have, do you have a work event out there? Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, buddy. A couple of buddies became members there. Um, so they had a last minute spot they asked to fill. So I jumped into it. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it's kind of interesting when you play different country clubs, you see how different ones are set up. Right. So there's no tea times for them. They just, you know, you go up to the tee when you're ready. So oh. that was pretty cool. Um, I saw, I saw another dude repping uh, the same sub 70 bag. So that was, he was walking a lot of kids out there, uh, you know, practicing and whatnot, but I mean, the course was in phenomenal shape. The greens were, greens were sick, man. They like rolled true. They're fast, but I enjoy fast greens like that. If they roll, you know, the right way. Um, so yeah, I did that on Thursday and Saturday we tried to do Cantigny, but you know, we got out there, pulled up, we had the 850. Like I was telling you, it looked like a, a golf outing, you know, between the practice screen and the putty green. There's probably like 40, 40 ish guys out there. But they, because of the rain and the weather over the night and coming, they didn't let anybody out, you know, early between times six o'clock. So there was a long wait. And then we got maybe two, three holes in, and the sky opened up again. The lightning came. They blew all the horns, got us off the course. So that kind of sucked. But, um, you know, I, like I was telling you when I was younger, I kind of maybe would have tried to push through, but now having kids, it's nothing, nothing to mess around with. So unfortunately, um, not sure if I'll be able to finish the round, but, um, hopefully the other guys do. Um, but it was nice playing with the couple holes with Bill and Chris Boone, Chris, they're, they're really good dudes. So it was, that was fun, but looking forward to Thursday. How about yourself? Yeah. I mean, I feel your pain, my man getting washed out stinks. There's, there's literally, I mean, other than like getting a bad steak <laughs> throughout the dinner, that's the only yeah. thing I can compare it to because there's so much hype build up and you're yeah. so excited. And then sure. you're, you're the rest of your day. Well, at least for, you know, those four hours is ruined until you, you know, until you come home and see the kids again. Yeah. And it's back to reality, but yeah, it's just, it's so disappointing. Um, Especially that course. Cause you know, can't take me such so nice. Yeah. And even the first, like the first, the only couple holes we played, it was in awesome condition, man. It was beautiful. Green as green can be obviously, obviously because of the rain, but the, the greens were perfect. It was just, it was nice. That's the disappointing thing. Cause I really did enjoy that course last year. But. Yeah. I love Cantini. Um, I got out and played, I got and played, uh, the Elks. It was awesome. Um, I forgot how good it was. And then it just, so happened, you know, ironically, because we're going out to Lasonia uh, on Thursday. Um, we talked about it last week. Same same designer of Kinky the Elks design Lasonia. So it was nice to get a little prep round because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see a lot of the same elevated greens, kind of bowl shaped green runoffs. Um, so it was nice to get out and play. Rob, the game. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know where to start. So I'll start here with we'll start with the good. The the ball striking and the and the driver was really good. I was just missing, you know, I was just missing my target. So yeah, yeah I was hitting really good iron shots. The putter is just abysmal right now. <laughs> I don't I mean, 
I don't know what to do with that thing because I loved it early on. And then I, f- I thought I found the setup. I think the issue is with, it's too long. Yeah, it's 36, right? Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure I put two inches on it. It's like 37. It's, it's super long. So, but I was always so used to being bent over with the, uh, the old. The mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm still doing that, but like, I'm kind of choked down. I don't know. It's, it's very, very inconsistent. Um, I have a lot of trouble with like with inside six feet because of the weight. It's so, so the toe hang on that thing's like eight and a half, like it's bananas, how mm-hmm. heavy it is. Um, lag putting with it. I've been pretty decent all year, but inside six feet, it's been total opposite of what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. That's usually where I'm, I'm pretty decent is with inside six feet. I, because of the weight, like I have no, I have no feel with inside six feet. Really? Even stuff short, blasting it, you know, three feet by. Yeah. So the, the putter needs some serious work, but the game itself, I mean, Kanky key is very scoreable. Um, so an 83 there is not great. Um, right. Yeah. It's, it's very score. I just didn't really get in a whole lot of trouble. There was, you know, a hole or two where, you know, I had to take a stroke, mm-hmm. you know, by either playing it like under a tree and, and just take my mess and, and hitting out, but like no real big blow up holes. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it was just, okay. I was, you know, definitely not satisfied with an 83, but I didn't think I hit the ball well, like it was, or I didn't think I hit the ball awful. Like it, it felt mm-hmm. like a good round. It just, yeah, you know, I wasn't close and then I wasn't making putts. So, you know, it is what it is, but, um, yeah, I was laughing because uh, Shane texted me. He goes, he said something like, "Love the course, great layout, hate to drive." I started laughing. I'm like, "It's not that bad." You're, well, you're 57's been, you know, much like everything else in Illinois. 57 has been under construction for probably 14 years. So mm-hmm. it's been it was one lane for like, you know, 15 miles. Like it's a joke. But yeah. the drive itself is not bad. Um, I mean, we played early Friday morning. And I was out there in, I think, 45, 48 minutes, something like that. Backtracking so, the, the round from Saturday, I was laughing, though, because Bill's like, are you the guy from the podcast? I said, yeah, I'm the guy from the podcast. <laughs> he goes, I hear you guys talk about me a lot. I said, well, no, we just I started laughing. I'm like, well, no, we we explain, like, you know, we have an 18-year-old to a 70-something-year-old, and we think it's awesome. Right. He started laughing. He's like, no, no, I'm just joking with you. He goes, I, I appreciate the call. I started laughing. I meant to text you right away about that one. Yeah, I remember uh, at last year's Westside Tour Championship, he said he was the talk of the town at uh, his family party. Because oh, they, yeah. They he, was rock, he was rocking the CGT hat, too, man. It was, nice. He was he all about it. Yeah, they're big supporters. Uh, mm-hmm. Really good dudes. Mm-hmm. But I guess somebody called him out and then he was like, Oh yeah. He's like, you know, I was on this podcast and blah, blah, blah. And and they're like, and he was like, well, no, just my name. You know, I wasn't physically on it, but we're talking about me because I'm the oldest guy on the tour. Right. Um, (laughs) He certainly doesn't, you know, come off at, you know, 70 or 71. Like he's in really good shape. He hits the ball. He hits the ball. Great. Yeah. I was sitting there like, I'm like, I would, I would trade my every tee shot. With if I could use his tee shot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, how about the three M? Did you catch any of that this weekend? You know, it's kind of funny. I was not paying attention to it because you know, Scott, well, Scott Piercy, you know, the the blister gate on Saturday. Blister. I caught that on, on Twitter, and then you know he had what a four or five stroke lead going into Sunday, and I'm like, I might as well get some yard work done or whatnot. Um, and then all of a sudden, you fl- I I look at Golf Channel's app. Like, holy shit, Fina was up by four now. So I, I, I put it on to watch it. I could not believe he went driver on 18, Fina. Uh-huh. Or even like what happened on 17. I mean, he just probably had too much adrenaline, overclubbed it, and just right. got a, obviously a lucky, lucky break. But like when you're on 18 and you're, you're hitting the driver when you didn't have to, that was nuts. Yeah. I mean, the whole collapse is nuts to me. I just, it's great, especially because he's a, you know, a vet too. You wouldn't expect that. Um, kind of had a shitty fried egg lie, but still, um, just a tough scene out there for Scott Piercy. And then, for sure. and then 
for out of all people to have Tony Fino, a guy who, you know, typically can't finish. Right. Basically just gets handed a W, but Hey, you know, a W well, he was, he was favored, right. Or he was not, well, he was the lowest ranking, right. 17th in the he, world. Or something he, like that. he had to be. Yeah. Yeah. So good for Fino. I love Fino. Um, mm -hmm. Great dude. So it's always good to see, you know, somebody win that, uh, that you like. Um, right. I kept laughing at all the, the memes of him dancing in the car after he. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. the PGA Tour even put it out, which is great because, you know, they need to, you know, push stuff like that to the younger crowd, I think. Um, yeah. But him and him in his car when he was dancing on the way to the Masters, yep. I think it was. Mm -hmm. So that was good to see. Um, I didn't really catch much of it, but, you know, I caught the highlights. I didn't even catch the, the ending. Um, I was just tracking it on my phone as well. Sure. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think it was a pretty low key tournament. Obviously, there wasn't a ton of a ton of people on the field, but yeah, nonetheless, it was on. It happened um, and then this week. We got the, the Rocket Mortgage, the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Yep. At the uh, Detroit Golf Club. Um, Did you see that they uh, released the revised uh, standings today for the FedEx? They took out. Uh, yeah. The yep. Yeah, which is interesting. I don't know. I don't really know what to think of that, to be honest. And then I saw, you know, did you see um, Liv's new, like, promotions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of crazy. I was reading that last night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm still working it all out. But before we dive into all that, we're going to talk about our Sonia trip coming up on Thursday. So we talked about action, side yeah. action. So I think what's going to happen for the first game, it's going to be Pardos versus Pardos. So it's going to be you and I uh, versus Chris and Adam Okay. in a six-point scotch game. And then so Chris would be stroking on the seven toughest holes. And then for round two, the Lynx, it's going to be low handicap versus high handicap. So it's actually you and Adam versus Chris and I. Chris, Chris is going to be – you guys are getting one aside. And then Chris is getting five pops on the five toughest. So <clears throat> we have our game set up in terms of team game. Now, so clear question on your six point scotch. Like I get in arguments about this all the time. Since we're not changing partners for that, for the whole round, once the press is on, does the press stay on for the whole round or does it, does that press end once the winning hole? So are you talking about, both games cumulative or are you just talking about one game? The first round where it's just going to be a six point scotch. The partners so, don't change. We're not doing six, six, six. For, no, you know. we're doing like the first round is a separate six point game. And then the second, the second game is a, sec a separate six point game, but you can only press when you're down. Right. But does that press, press stay? No, the stay? press, the press only remains for that nine holes. Or if that losing team comes up in points and then okay. eventually wins. All right. Just like, make it not, yeah, is that how you play? I've I've been, you know, I feel like everybody plays it differently. I've been play I've played in scotch games that that press stays on the whole time, and you can, you know, so it's what I, it's, you know, I'm just making sure I'm understanding what. So our, our our six point game is is two for team, right? Two for birdie, one for man, one for prox, mm -hmm. and the prox is you have to par in order. But if to you par. birdie, you umbrella it. Yeah. So yep. six point that turns if, if you win it all that goes yep. double six to twelve twelve yep and then our press like I said our press is you can only press when you're down and it only sure. remains for for nine holes or until the losing team you know is up in points gotcha and then you so winning team always has honors on the box mm -hmm. right yep. and then losing team can roll. Winning team could then re-roll, you know. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you could have a press re, press roll, re-roll. Gets interesting. Um, yeah. But in terms of side bets, what are we doing? For are we going to do a Nassau? Sure, for I'm all sure. For each Nassau's fine by me. Yep. For each Woodlands and Links. Yeah. So what? So, a, a 2020 20, 20 for each. 2020. 20, 20. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then 
right now i'm a i'm a seven two right now rob you're an i you know what i was i was laughing because i saw that <laughs> it was i find myself being a cdga creep on the yeah. app sometimes just oh, yeah. seeing so i saw that i'm like and i looked and i saw you had the 280 rounds i'm like wow that jumped you up pretty high there huh yeah oh yeah so you'd be getting one aside two all day okay all right you're a nine i'm a seven right yeah, sure. Yeah, let's yeah. It work. So you got you, it. So that's two strokes. You you get you get one aside. Nassau, 2020 20, 20 for each the the links and the the woodland. We're playing the woodlands first, and then the links. Um, anything else you want to throw in there? Uh, let's see after the first round how it goes. Okay. Yeah, we could always. I mean, let's just. I mean, we're not tied to anything here right now. Let's just no. see how the how the day flows. Yeah, yeah. Um, Part threes. Five bucks, closest two. Closest two, love it. And par, par qualify. If you three putt, you pay everybody else. I like that. I'm in on that. Okay. Um, yeah, we could come up with some more, but just so the listeners have an idea for what's going to happen on mm-hmm. Thursday. Um, so that's set in stone. That's good to know. I'm sure we'll probably add something else, especially for round two. Um, but we got more news, Rob. Brent Mancuso, I hope I'm not butchering that. I'm sure I am, is going to be joining the short show here shortly to discuss his ace on number 12 at Kankakee. <laughs> I just played Kankakee, and I'm telling you what, number 12 is is not, and you've played Kankakee. Number 12 is no walking you, in the park. What would you hit? Hit away. You what you hit? Yeah. It was, 130, it was 138. I hit a pitching ledge. Okay. So it was front. It was front right, and it was like right after that swall. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, dude, it'd be better to come up short, and if anything, that thing's gonna kick like downhill. Yeah. So I just tried to hit a nice wedge, um, tugged it, hit the green, rolled off, chipped up, putted for par. Um, but yeah, I mean that green in general, like. If the flag's middle, which we'll have to ask where, where it was when he had his ace, it's not an easy green to get home. No, not at all. No. Elevated. It's I mean, if you're off the back, that chip sucks. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that chip at least sucks. He's gonna be jumping on here shortly. So we will bring him in. All right, folks, we're back with Mr. Ace himself, Brent Mancuso. <laughs> Brent, how we doing? I'm doing well, guys. Thanks for uh, having me on. No problem. I mean, when somebody has an ace on tour, we're definitely bringing them on. Um, as we mentioned last week, you were playing your U.S. Open round at Kankakee Elks last week, and you stepped on the tee box of number 12. And what were you thinking going into that hole, Brent? So I came off 10 and 11 with two pars and stepped to the tee box. Kind of did, it was you know about 154 yards I think the wind was kind of a little tricky that day it was it was with me a little bit so yeah I grabbed a nine iron um, you know just kind of took my normal routine step up there made a really good swing um, watching the balls in the air it's kind of like the pin was I think it was kind of front right a little okay. bit yeah and I'm watching it. You know, it's got a nice little draw on the ball and it bounces and it disappears. Oh boy. (laughs) And, you know, the two guys I'm playing with are like, oh, that looked pretty good. Right. And then, you know, I hit first. So they had a hit. So I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, I can't see the ball. And I even like got my range finder out and kind (laughs) of looked to see if I could see it. I saw nothing. (laughs) Oh yeah. Okay. So. I'm like, whatever. And I was kind of reeling from the front nine. I, you know, I had a kind of a super up and down, uh, front nine. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to grind out this round and, you know, post a decent score, whatever. Right. I'm riding solo. The two guys I'm playing with, they're, they're riding together. So I have my cart. I'm driving up there, getting close. I see the mark. I'm like, okay, there's, that's a, that's a pretty premium mark. Right. Um, Where's the flipping ball? <laughs> so I don't see the ball. Um, 
you know, I play a good ball, so I expect it to not, you know, hit and just bound over the green. Right. Pull up behind the green. I don't see the ball. So I'm kind of like getting a little excited at this point. <laughs> don't see it. Jump out the cart, grab my putter, you know, kind of run up there a little bit. You know, peak. I do like a peak in the hole. You know, you don't want to like just run. Quick peak. I see half the white, and then it's just you know, fist pumps from there. Did you go <laughs> absolutely bananas? Yeah, complete bananas. <laughs> you know the the guys the guys that were playing they hit it they hit it short and right to the green. So like they ran up. You know we're high fiving on the green, <laughs> hooting and hollering. Right. Um. So yeah, that was. That that was that right there, and then you know you take some picks, yeah. um, grab the ball out. I sure. waited to like repair the mark, you know, do all the stuff that you kind of think about doing, right. you know, before it happens. So you guys have a group behind you? Did anybody get to see it? So we had nobody behind us, but there was three guys in front of us, and I think on like well, I want to say like fifteen. One of the guys came up and they said, Hey, did one of you guys jar it back there? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, you know, he's like, yeah, he, you know, he aced it. He's like, so we were on there. He was like, we were on T box on 13 and we heard the, the clank Oh, no um, because it, yeah. So it one hopped and then, you know, popped right in. So they heard the clank. So nice. Um, so yeah, that was cool. So you were feeling good stepping on 12 T box with two pars. And then when you hit it and like you said, so when I played it on, we had the same pin placement because I just played it on Friday. It was front, right. And there was that huge mound there. Right. So I'm, I'm yeah. assuming you saw it go right over that mound. Was there any thought like, Hey, maybe that just went in. No, because <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never, like, it's just, I've, you know, I've been playing golf for so long right? and it's just like, you never really think you're just going to, you know, one hop it in the cup on a part mm-hmm. three, you know, right? it's just like, yeah, that's awesome. You never realize how it's going to come. That's, that's the tricky part. That's awesome. And actually, so after that, you know, I know, uh, I believe it was, was it David Rush that shared it on Slack? Yes. Yeah. yeah so that was very cool. And then actually I got an email from uh, Jim, the GM over at Kanky Alex. He's like, hey, did you hear one of your guys, Brent Mancuso, ace number 12? I'm like, I literally just found out, you know, an hour ago via via Slack. So it was cool for, for him to even reach out uh, and acknowledge that. Speaking of, when you guys got, I'm assuming you guys had um, some post-round drinks after that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we definitely, I was like, you know, guys, I'm buying drinks. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting in the clubhouse. Absolutely. <laughs> and good thing that, you know, the pace of play out there was, was good because I'm like, okay, I don't have to be home for a little bit. Now <laughs> I got to yeah. have drinks, even though my wife, my wife would have understood that's for sure. <laughs> right. right. Um, so yeah, I bought them drinks. Then we saw the group behind, uh, in front of us. Um, you know, there was some randoms in there that I had to buy their drinks for sure. But yeah. So, oh, I think I bought like 20 drinks, but I gladly do that again. Yeah, awesome. right. That awesome. is awesome. I'm assuming you kept the yeah. ball. You kept the card. Kept the ball. I got it in a case. My dad, I called my dad when I was leaving. Oh, you know, I told awesome. about it. And then like, I had a cool like case. He mailed one to me a couple of days after. That's awesome. What, uh, was, what was the message like from your dad? Yeah, it was good. It was just, uh, you know, it says, it's got the date on it. It's got my name. It's got the Kinky Kielks, uh hole number 12 it's kind of like a little glass case and oh, that's awesome yeah you know he taught me the game he ha- he doesn't have one so you know he was uh he was pretty stoked though that is very cool you know what a great what a great gift from pops um yeah that you'll remember forever um yeah aces are always fun man i've never i don't think i've ever heard of someone having a a bad day when they have an ace so no yeah i'll it's tell cool. you what was the you know afterwards like so i stepped to like 13 t box you know i'm feeling it obviously and it's like you're you're almost kind of shaking a little bit right so i pipe the drive i'm like let's go you know <laughs> we're going low this nine <laughs> i get up to my i grab a 60 because i'm like i don't know i think i was like 85 yards out i chunk it 
you know, um, <laughs> I ended up getting up and down for bogey, but you know, the round was made. I was actually wanting to get the rest of the round over with, you yeah. know, like yeah. kind of just cause you're so like amped up and everything like that. It was yeah. absolutely crazy. That's awesome, man. That's great. Congrats again. Um, thanks for coming on. Thanks for telling the story. Rob, do you have a whole one? I don't. I've talked about it. I've had a hole in one on the wrong hole, but I've never had a hole in one. <laughs> you have told that story. I, <laughs> I, I do not as I, I don't either. Um, so congrats there, Brent. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully you get another one by the year's end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just through, you know, use me as an example. It can happen at any time. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, Brent. We appreciate you coming on, buddy. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. You too. You too. All right, folks, we are back, Rob. That's a hell of an interview, man. I get I get amped up for stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I'm so I, happy for him right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd probably go back to drinking if I got a home <laughs> one, and I probably wouldn't go home for the rest of the day. We always say that, though. But be, oh. be stuck at the bar in the clubhouse just getting hammered. Right. I would. I wouldn't want that day to end, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, super cool that his dad sent him a, a gift. Oh yeah, that's case, awesome. You know, he'll have that forever. I'm sure hanging in his his office or in his house somewhere. Um, it's, you know, like I think about that. Like, would you be if you didn't like no one? If no one ends up golfing and he gets a, I've never and I don't have a hole in one yet. By the time he's golfing and then he he gets a hole in one, am I secretly a little pissed about it that my son got a hole in one and I've been golfing for you know thirty plus years or? I, I don't I, know. A little bit of jealousy, I think. I don't know. I, I I would assume, you know, initially there's probably nothing but, you know, um, you know, happiness for him. Mm -hmm. And then maybe as the days went on, yeah, he maybe got a little salty. Yeah, I, I imagine Big Red would be throwing it in my face after a while. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I would yeah, I would assume that's probably you know, I'm sure it's probably 99% pure joy and happiness yeah. for, this, for your son. And then that yeah. 1%, it's like that little asshole. I don't even have a right. one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that'll change Thursday. I mean, we were playing 36 holes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. We got plenty of, we got plenty of opportunities, although we've had plenty of opportunities in the last 36 years. <laughs> yeah, so, right. um, moving on, Rob. <laughs> we're we're going to jump right into the book. It would T. uh, Rocket Mortgage Classic here. Who do you like this week? Anybody? Uh, to be honest with you, like I like one of his picks. I like I like how Thigal has been playing a lot. I mean, with the open and stuff like that. So I I would have to. I, man, I just hope I hope he wins soon because I, dude, I love his game. To be honest with you, that's my guy. I love him too. Um, all right, we'll jump right in. His long shot, no, four hundred to one. Han one thirty to one. Hubbard. 55 to one Riley 40 to one and T's favorite Tigala 40 to one. And you could book it with T. I like yeah, it. I agree. I, uh, I'll jump on Tigala all day. Um, I don't actually mind with the odds Han 130 to one. I kind of like that too. I mean, he played good this past weekend. Yeah. I mean, those are great odds too. Yeah. Just a little sprinkle. Um, mm -hmm. moving on. We're going to jump right in, Rob. Are you ready for the top three? Well, going back to book it with T, man, I'm surprised you didn't put out his live picks. So we discussed that. Uh, okay. I think, that, I think that's coming. Okay. All right. That's All right. coming. Um, right. I think, you know, as they try to determine, you know, the field and what these sure. promotions look like, the, the live betting is, is coming. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Stay tuned on that. But are you ready for the top three, Rob? I am ready for the top three. All right. Hit me. All right, so I don't know if we did this, and I apologize. 40 episodes is a lot to remember everything that we've done, but seeing that we're jumping in a car on Thursday and having to take a three-hour uh, road trip, what are the top three things that you need to have or do for your road trip? So that's that's honestly a good question because I've been thinking about this the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to go – this. This isn't something I need to have, but just knowing I'm going to have somebody else in my car for about total six hours, <laughs> I'm going to go get a car wash. I appreciate that. Clean. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. I mean, I can't 
I can't pick you up and it just be a, although I do keep my car pretty clean and you know, it is what it is. I just, it's just something I do, um, sure. you know, stuff like for weddings and yeah, stuff like that. Things I I'm going to need to have in the car is, well, it's already in there, but the phone charger so that mm-hmm. we could charge it up, listen to tunes Yep. on the way up. Although I don't know how, how many, uh, how many tunes we're going to get in because we're leaving at 5 a.m. So there might be a silence, uh, an hour of silence there while we just kind of wake up. Um, a cooler. Oh, for sure. I got, I got a cooler ready to go with, um, you know, drinks, mm-hmm. you know, Gatorades, waters for the way up as well as the way home. Yeah. Um, and then I would probably say some type of snack. Mm-hmm. Or mainly the way home. Yeah. Um, I'll probably drink coffee the entire way up there. Oh. And then the way home, I'm going to need a seat. Please tell me you're not a guy that has to stop. Like to take a piss? Yeah. No. Like you go from point A to point B, right? No, stop. That's a, that's Thank a, God. We, that's we, like, we that's my rule in Michigan. We yeah. Piss before we leave. Yep. Yeah. No, we're not stopping, Rob. I, I say that all the time. Like on the way to Michigan, I tell Katie and the kids, go now because I am not stopping. That's it. Nope. Yeah. How about you? Uh, yeah. So um, three hole. I appreciate the car wash. I really do. Because like I get out, like Vince has got a uh, gold retriever. I'm like, I'm not getting in that car unless you go <laughs> vacuum that shit out, you know, type deal thing. Yeah. So um, I would have to say three would be like, you know, like a playlist you know type of music either podcast lined up downloaded ready to go you know yeah. something like that uh two would have to be definitely a snack whether it be the granola bars or you know i always laugh because my my uncle on my dad's side every road trip would be <laughs> it sounds gross but a bag of funyuns and chocolate milk i love that <laughs> yeah two of my favorite things I know. Funyuns are awesome, man. I love Funyuns. Funyuns are awesome. Katie Katie looks at me like I got three heads when I say Funyuns. Um, I get ripped on all the time for still drinking uh, chocolate milk for dinner. Oh, I love, now having kids is my perfect excuse to have chocolate milk, but uh, over chocolate milk. Speaking of, not to interrupt you, but I feel like we need to have this discussion before you mention your last one. Um, and also it happened on Friday at Kankakee Elks. Um, Hook decided to bust out a banana in the cart while we were playing, and it <laughs> fucking stunk so bad. So I hope you, I hope you don't plan on bringing a banana. Uh, if so, you could eat it prior to. I mean, <laughs> it fucking reeked, and I hated it. So, no. Did I ever tell you what happened with the banana at the uh, at uh, Klein Creek? I think he did. Yeah, mush. Well, anyways, um, so two would be a snack, whether granola bar or whatnot. But number one, I had to have like three monsters with me. That's my number one thing to have on the road. Yeah, you're not a coffee guy, are you? No, no. So I'll be throwing monsters in that cooler. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's all right. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you drink monsters every morning? Uh, Yeah, every day, like three of them. Really? Yeah. Holy Christ. All right. What, uh, Hey, everybody's got their vice, man. Everybody's got their vice. So are they, what flavor are they? Are they like the, Oh, big, uh, this is, this is great, uh, radio, but, uh, for those that are watching ultra red, that's how long you've been on the monster game since Eastern. Really? Oh yeah. Have mercy. Have mercy is right. So, well, Great show, Rob. As always, we have oh, a hell yeah. of a, we have a hell of a week to look forward to. We Cheers. do. I'm, I'm assuming tune into our IG and stuff like that, and golf yeah. unfiltered on Thursday because I'm sure we're all going to be posting stuff. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of content, which is going to be great. Um, reminder: North West Side Tours scores due by Friday, 9 p.m. Yep. And until next time, Rob, we'll uh, we'll see you in the fairway. Catch you in the fairway, Tom. See you, buddy.